Prescott, Hello! I am Tara from Living on a Dime to Grow Rich because living on a dime does not mean you wallow in your misery. It means you live on a dime so that you can propel Wait. yourself forward and make your life better. Get out of debt. Save money. Yes. What she said. And stop your whining. <laughs> oh. I'm blowing out the mic, Dave says. But how can I tell him? To get it together, people. Oh my goodness, he just <laughs> capped it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, I'm guys. done. All right. Author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook. What? If you want this wonderfully world famous cookbook, grab it today. The kids packed up the last pallet of books. The last pallet of books are packed. <gasps> When those are gone, it's going to be on back order until the new edition comes. Today we are making my favorite freezer meal, Easy Green Chili Recipe, page 274 in this edition. Also, it is 25% off right now in our store, just because in case we move, we want to be sold out so we don't have books to move. Because <laughs> moving books is not fun, let me tell you. We um, interesting trick if we're able to pull that off. <laughs> we are hoping to find a house to move to before the new edition comes, and we are having printer issues, so we got stalled a little bit here. So maybe God is just stalling a couple more weeks you for us. We've had printer issues for like a year now. We have had printer for more than a year. It has been a year and four months to be exact. But who's counting? Who's counting? Not me. <laughs> okay. All right. This green chili recipe is my number one favorite recipe. I love green chili. I do, I do, I do. Now, I am making this the long version way, I guess is how I want to say that. But, um,. I will say that normally, this is not how I make it. <laughs> normally, I take the easy route and use pre-cooked pre, um, chicken. So I take leftover chicken, I'll cook up extra chicken breasts if I'm making just regular chicken breasts. And I will um, just cook extra and then I just save it for the next day. So let's say I have, I don't know, Parmesan chicken tenders or something. Then I'll do some um, chicken that is not, uh, what, seasoned. I'll do that separate. Well, that's a slimy chicken. And uh, <laughs> then I will cook chicken. green chili the next day. I don't have leftovers. I pre-cook for the next meal because I have fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and cooking wears me out, which is sort of ironic since I'm a cookbook author, but hey, you know, so goes life. All right, so usually what um, I will do also is if I have a rotisserie chicken and I have extra chicken from that, and let's say we're kind of tired of eating chicken, so we don't want to do rotisserie anymore, I will um, take the shredded rotisserie chicken and do it in my little packets. You guys know all about my little packets that I do, or maybe not, but just in case you don't, what I do is I'll take a fold top bag like this and put the shredded chicken in there, fold it over. This part is disposable, but then I put packets of these in freezer bags so that then I have chicken already pre-cooked and ready to go for meals like this. And um, then I don't have to expend so much energy. My fibromyalgia has been getting worse the last few. Now this is going to cook slower than it normally does. Normally, I it cooks a lot faster, but this particular, what do you call this thing? A hot plate? I don't know what yes. do you call that. Hot plate or whatever. 
Um, it a mini cooks, electric burner device. <laughs> it cooks really slow for some reason. I need to get a better one. Okay, so I did about one and a half chicken breasts, and this is going to be at least ten meals, maybe closer to twelve for us. Usually, what I do is I eat it or I cook it and we eat it for dinner, and then I freeze this in family size portions and then when I need a quick freezer dinner I will just defrost it okay so I'm gonna save that for my chicken curry tomorrow I will just defrost it and um, put it in there all right so then I cut up the onion and okay is this thing yeah I guess it is okay um then I cut up the onion and this is actually the hardest part, is cutting the chicken and the onion, and that's it. Everything else, you just pour it in and go. So. We're having a lot of streaming issues right now. We're having oh, streaming doing? issues? It's dropping, but everything looks to be running totally smooth. So it's dropping, but it looks like it's running you know, smooth. At least one person people. said, a couple people said that they're having. We've had like 10 people say it, so I'm kind of. Oh, oh no. Okay, so we're having internet issues. Big surprise. Okay, and I'm just going to chop this up for my chicken curry tomorrow because that just sounds so good. That chicken, the chicken curry is actually going to be in our Dining on a Dime Volume 2, which... Tell them what happened. Okay, wait a minute, Dave. You have to catch Dad for this for this moment. We're having a moment. Well, they say no, it's fine. That's so weird because it's been... Maybe it just dropped for a minute, the internet. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. Chicken curry <gasps> is in our Dining on a Dime cookbook. Yes. Which, what did we do what with today, honey? We finished all the corrections and the proofreading Woo! in Dining on a Dime 2. Volume 2. And we that, half the pictures. That and the index. Are the two hardest parts. Are the two hardest parts. It's even harder than writing it. And we got done today with the proofreading and corrections. And we got about half the pictures put in. So all we have to love is half the pictures and the index. I think we'll have it to a printer next week. Now the question is, what printer will we send it to? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you gotta love it. Okay. Yeah, so. that's been a rough thing. Yesterday we were, I was working on it till like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. The new yeah. printer. We have a printer we were working with, but they just suddenly vanished. <laughs> <laughs> we submitted the book two weeks ago and have been waiting for a quote for boxing the books because we had the last set pre-boxed and it has helped tremendously with shipping. Like, it's changed my life for shipping. And uh, two weeks ago we submitted the book, asked them, okay, we need payment information, and we haven't heard anything. Like, okay, if We can't right. pay, then... <laughs> So now, yesterday, we started looking for another printer again. Okay, anyway, so Dining 2 is moving along. We're super excited about that. Now, let's talk about freezing foods. Yes? Susan is wondering, do you not cut the fat off on the chicken? No. Why? I don't know. I guess some people do. How much fat it is, is it? It doesn't have hardly any. Fat? No, huh? Oh, okay. It's boneless, skinless chicken breast. There's not any fat on it, really. Um, okay, now, like I said... This would have already been cooked on my stovetop, but I wanted you guys to see. As a matter of fact, I'm almost debating if I should just move it to the stovetop and get it finished because... One other question. Cindy was wondering, do you not save your onion skins for soup stock? Um, you know, I don't. And I probably should, and it's a tip in our book that we've had for 20 years, but... You've done it in the past. I have done it in the past, but I, um, I just don't use soup stock at all anymore um vegetable soup might be fine but chicken broth chicken stock beef stock makes me sick and so i don't eat it anymore and so yeah so anyway um uh, no i don't freezing 
foods. <gasps> this green chili is my number one recipe that I freeze because I just love it so much. So what do I do? After it's cooked, if I'm saving a family portion, I will put it in a freezer bag, seal it up, and stack it flat in my freezer, okay? If I'm doing a Tara portion, I will put it in a little bag like this and stack it up in the freezer like that, okay? All right, so it's super easy. Now, how do I freeze or cook? I don't freeze or cook like all these freezer gurus do where I go and spend all day Saturday cooking 30 meals for three hours or whatever. I think that's crazy myself. If it works for you, go for it. Does not work for me by any stretch of the imagination. It takes me less than 20 minutes almost every night that I cook. Sometimes it'll be 30 but it usually takes me less than 20 minutes. And this is how I do it. First of all, instead of freezing entire meals, I freeze the ingredients. So what do I mean by that? So if I... It smells amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so if I am cutting up my chicken for green chili, I pre-cut the chicken for the chicken curry the next night, and it's two completely different dishes from two completely different parts of the world, but the ingredients are similar, so I pre-chopped my onion and I pre-chopped my chicken. Well, I didn't do all of it. I need to do one more chicken breast, but you get the point. So I will pre-chop ingredients and use them. I will pre-cook ingredients and use them. So what do I mean by that? I will cook an entire turkey and then I'll break it up into the little packets like this and then I'll make my recipes with turkey. I'll either make a turkey dinner or I'll make um, turkey soup, turkey casserole, whatever. Now, for things like turkey dinner, what I do is I will take a piece of foil and line I take an eight and a half by, or nine by, nine by 13 inch pan, and I will make little foil packets. I'll usually get like five. One, two, three, four, five, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Then I bring the foil up, I put my turkey in there, I pour some gravy on there, I put my mashed potatoes, and I put my leftover vegetables, fold it up, freeze it, the next morning, take all the packets out and put it in a big freezer bag like this. Then when I need a really super quick and easy dinner, I just pull out the whole foil packet and throw it in the oven. It didn't even take me two seconds for dinner, okay? I do the same thing with rotisserie chickens or roast chickens. If I roast a chicken, most of the time we won't eat four meals worth of chicken. Most of the time it will just be leftover and then I freeze it in the little packets and I will use it for green chili, use it for chicken and noodles, chicken uh, pot pie, shepherd's pie, anything like that. Okay. Then, um, I, okay, this is almost done. Okay. I'm going to like, I'm trying an experiment. I used bacon grease. Did you guys catch that? I used bacon grease for my oil today and I'm testing to see how that turns out. Ooh. But you can use butter or olive oil, whatever oil you want. Okay. Um, I do the same with hamburger. I'll cook up five pounds of hamburger at once when I'm wanting to make tacos or whatever. It takes just like five or 10 minutes longer to cook that full amount. Then I'm not getting a pan dirty. I'm not having to stand over the stove to sit and cook um, hamburger. I, I'll be frank. I honestly cannot remember the last. I don't know that I've ever cooked just one pound of hamburger. I honestly cannot remember ever cooking. Even when I was single, living on my own, I would always fry up three, four, five pounds of hamburger and freeze it and then just pull out a packet and make my tacos or beef stroganoff if it's, you know, um, 
round steak, whatever meat I'm using, I'll do that. So freeze the ingredients and then that'll save you a ton of time. That's the biggest thing is if you have the, if you have the meat pre-cooked. Do you have a question? Nope. Okay. Just Next. Smiling at what people are saying. Stop the big freezer days. Now, this method of cooking has been going on for 20 years since we started. It's obviously working for some people and that's fine, but be realistic with your freezer cooking. I used to know bloggers who said, oh yeah, I cooked all day and, and I got 120 meals done with my mom and sisters in five hours. <laughs> and I mean, this is serious. Seriously, this is true. And my sisters and I split it up between the three. Are you kidding me? You've got five people in the kitchen and you're working five hours and you got 120 meals and that's it. That's not really saving you time. Now, if that met, once again, if that method works for you, you just keep right on doing it. But to say that it actually saves time is not really true. Or you'll go and you'll see these um, freezer cooking recipes. Oh yeah, I make dump chicken. I dump some salsa in my freezer bag with my onions and my chicken, and then I just dump it in the crock pot. Guys, it literally takes two minutes to open the can of salsa, pour it in the crock pot, and cut up the onion and put it in the crock pot. Why are you wasting a freezer bag and wasting freezer space with these pre-made meals? That makes absolutely no sense at all. Um, okay, yes? Uh, Mary Beth says, I had quick cooking oats to stretch out my hamburger. Can't tell the difference in taste. Creates more volume in meats and the family can't tell the difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a meatloaf recipe. Kind of. Don't mm -hmm. you put yeah. oatmeal in meatloaf? Yeah. Um, so, stop. Stop the big freezer cooking days if you're getting tired and worn out. I mean, I personally don't want to spend the entire Saturday morning cooking, even if it is for the same meal. And then be realistic when you're doing your freezer meals. If you're doing things like dumping chicken and salsa in a freezer bag and freezing it, that doesn't make any sense at all. It just, it really doesn't. I'm sorry. I, I know that there are people out there who are just going to uh, take me up and down over that one, but it's like freezing peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Really? You know, if you're that busy that you can't make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you need to start cutting something out. Just telling you like it is. Okay. Any questions before I get slammed with hate mail? Uh, oh no. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're going to say. Sharon wants to know what yeast do you order in bulk? I don't know the name of it. You can go to Amazon and look, but I think that we have it in our Amazon store. I thought I put it in we our We put Amazon one store. in there, and at the time, everybody said it was out. It was the wrong one. Okay. Okay, I think... just a second. Let me fill this with water now. Is Ellie around? Oh, Denise yeah. said the soap arrived today. Ooh, yay! Yay! Yeah, so, so, so people were asking, and she did sell out of a lot of her soap. And I think she still got a bunch in stock, but she did sell out. Okay, so I have my onions and my um, chicken browned. I threw in my bouillon cubes. If you prefer, you or added water and threw in my bouillon cubes. If you prefer, you can use chicken stock. That's totally fine. Doesn't matter. Um, and I am throwing in my green chilies. These green chilies have been kind of hot lately, so I've only been doing a half a can instead of a full can. And then, just because I need to use them up, I've got some um, bell peppers here that I'm just going to add. They're dehydrated just because I need to use them up and feel like adding an extra vegetable. Okay, so then we're just gonna let that simmer 
forgot my garlic powder and onion powder and salt. And then we're just going to let that simmer for just a minute and then we'll thicken it. Okay. So there was a question. There were a couple. Well, one question. Janice uh, wanted to know. Janice from the Santa Cruz Mountains <laughs> wanted to know, do I have to parboil potatoes that I'm making hash browns out of before I freeze them? I just want to shred raw then freeze. Is that okay? Isn't that what you do? I don't know. You'll have to Google that one. I thought you just shredded them. And I don't. Them. I don't do anything with potatoes. Was that your mom that did that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mom dehydrated them. She didn't freeze them, but mom dehydrates them, and I think she does parboil them, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Okay. Paul says, my wife said that's genius putting next day's ingredients in the bag. Yes. Um, and it saves a lot of time and energy. Does physical activity no, I mean, it just is a, if you can or not. Yeah, you can if you want. Um, so, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate mail from people who love big freezer cooking days. But <gasps> this is not something that I think even really makes sense. If you use it as a social occasion with your family and friends, that's totally fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, but... If you're just doing it for yourself, save yourself the headache and just get recipes that are simple, like in Dining on a Dime. And just use those as your regular recipes. Next, um, line your pans with foil and then freeze them in the pan. So if I'm making things like, well, this isn't a good, okay, like a meatloaf. Instead of making one meatloaf, I'll take five pounds of hamburger and make five meatloafs. And what I'll do is I'll line my bread pans or three lo meatloafs, however many, but I'll line my bread pan with foil, put my meatloaf in there, put the foil up, throw it in the freezer, let it freeze into that shape, take it out, put it in a freezer bag, then when I go to cook the meatloaf, I just pop it straight back in my bread pan and I cook it in the oven like normal. It takes the same amount of time to make three to five meatloafs as it does one. I mean, we're talking like two minutes more, really. It is not any extra work at all. The same with meatballs. I will make five or 10 pounds of hamburger worth of meatballs at a time roll them up, put them on a cookie sheet, freeze them, then put them in a freezer bag. Then I just take out the meatballs and put them in a pan. You can line your pan with foil, put all your meatballs in there, freeze them, and then put your foil closed, put it in a freezer bag, and cook it. Now, next thing, cook your food in the oven when at all possible. Now, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this too. But here's the thing, 90% of crock pot food is gross. I can agree with that. I'm sorry. It gets overcooked, it gets mushy, it gets slimy. And really, there are, we're, we're coming out with a crock pot cookbook in about two weeks. We're redesigning our crock pot cookbook that's now, we're expanding it, redoing it. So I'm not completely anti-crock pot, but the oven when you roast foods just gives it so much better flavor. So if you're cooking a meatloaf or you're cooking meatballs, put it in there. Now I totally get, I grew up in Kansas. I totally understand in the summer, you may not be want, wanting to run your oven and that's totally fine. But the other nine months of the year, or six months of the year, depending on where you live. Use your oven if you can. Oven roasted foods just give it so much more flavor depth. It doesn't make it mushy. It just tastes so much better. And I'll be, I'll be honest, I think part of the reason why people eat out so much is they don't like the food they cook at home because it's mushy and gross. Well, just learn how to cook in your oven. And you may have a few failures losing your oven. That's fine. That's totally fine. Have some failures 
and learn how to do it, then you'll be cooking food at home so much more, so much more because the food actually tastes good and it saves you money. Honestly, we go out to eat for date night. We go to one place now. Do you know why? Because they make awesome tacos. Because they make awesome <laughs> tacos. But every place else we go, Olive Garden, Chili's, Golden Corral, I don't know. Every place else we've tried, cafes, quite frankly, the food tastes better that I cook at home than at these restaurants. And it really ticks me off that I spend 20, 25 bucks. Well, we don't spend that much. 15 bucks on a meal that tastes nasty. So if you learn how to cook and get used to cooking, if you use your crock pot, find those recipes that actually really work in the crock pot so that your food's not gross, your food's not mushy. And like I said, I'm not completely anti crock pot, but there are certain things that taste better in a crock pot versus the oven. Casseroles being one of them, they cook so much better in the oven. Meatloaf is another one, you know, those kinds of things. Meatballs are fine in a crock pot, you know, but um, those are some of the things that are um, better cooked in the oven versus the crock pot. Okay. Any questions before I go to the next thing? Um, not specifically on what you're talking about. Okay. Do you want to wait for the next? Yes. Okay. So one more thing. What kind of things do I freeze? So here are the main real meals that I will freeze. I will freeze meatloaf before it's cooked. I will freeze barbecue meatballs before it's cooked. I will freeze pizza dough occasionally Really, it takes like two minutes to make pizza dough, so I don't even do that either. Um, I will cook um, spaghetti sauce, make a big batch of meat spaghetti sauce, and freeze that. Made rights. In here, it's a hamburger. Let's see, if you're from the Midwest, um, what was the place called? Oh, shoot. Well, I think there's a place called Made Rights, but New Way in Kansas, if you're from Kansas, New Way is one of them. And it's like a, a, a loose meat sandwich where it's hamburger with seasonings and then you put pickles on there mm. with your hamburger bun or whatever. Isn't that here called a, where's that other place? I can't, New Way oh, is in Kansas, place. but... I don't know, whatever, but you know, it's just a loose meat sandwich. Shepherd's pie, I'll do that occasionally. But for shepherd's pie, what I mostly do is I'll freeze the chicken individually, freeze the leftover vegetables individually, and then just dump them all together and make the shepherd's pie. So those are my tips for using the freezer. Make it easy on yourself. Stop making so much work for yourself. Don't wear yourself out. Life's too short. <laughs> Actually, that's one thing I didn't, I wasn't hearing everything Tara said because I was in the comments seeing what all of you were saying. But um, one thing I think she really focuses on in these books is more simple. Yeah. We're just amazed how many recipes have 38 ingredients for something that we use six ingredients. Well, and as we're writing these cookbooks. Oh, Made Rights. That's right. Yeah, wait, Made Rights. Actually, actually, no, I was thinking of the other place. Uh, New Way? No, that's what I said. Else. You're thinking Runza? Runza. That's not the it's same not thing. The same? No, uh, that's cabbage rolls. Ah. Um, but uh, as we go and we we look up recipes um, and that kind of thing, it always amazes me. Hold on, you guys can simmer this for as long as you need. So. If you need to simmer it for 10 minutes, simmer it for 10 minutes. If you need to simmer it for an hour, do it for an hour. This is one thing that actually is really good in the crock pot. <laughs> As I'm saying, I hate the crock pot. Uh, but, but really, guys, I use my crock pot like six times a year. And now that I don't make be now that I don't make bone broth anymore, I don't even I probably won't even use it that much. As a matter of fact, I haven't had my crock pot for three months, and 
I don't miss it. So anyway, okay, back to what I was, I was saying something and I forgot what I was saying. Oh, recipes. Yeah. And I, I was talking to my friend and she was like, you know, she said, cause I was asking her, cause she doesn't cook. She doesn't like to cook. She never learned how to cook. And I'm like, okay, what kinds of things are you interested in for cookbooks? She said, you know, she said anything that's five ingredients or less. She said, I won't even look at a recipe if I go in and there's 10 ingredients. I was like, well, isn't that interesting? So now we're converting recipes to go from cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, allspice to just say pumpkin spice. And then we'll put what's in pumpkin spice underneath the recipe. Because people will look at that recipe and they'll think, oh, there's 10 ingredients. It's just spices, but it's like she said, she said, I don't even want to think about putting more than two or three spices in. Yeah, we were including salt and pepper. We were surprised <laughs> about that, to be honest. So anyway, yeah. All right. Yeah, Darlene makes apple butter in her crock pot. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's one recipe that does work really good. Well, and somebody said, uh, oh, Carol Ann, I found that browning meat before putting it in the crock pot makes it taste better. Yeah, it does, but then you have to dirty another pan. So that's not simple. My problem with the crock pot is it's such a pain to clean it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like clean it. It hurts my hands to hold it up while I'm cleaning it and all that. Do I use fresh garlic very often? No, I don't. I use mostly garlic powder. Once again, simple. The taste really is not, I, we really don't notice the taste that much. Now I do buy it now and then, um, but garlic powder seems to work just as well. I like the so, fresh for the texture. Yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. we we tend to have a lot of it if we if we're gardening a lot in a particular year, and not so much the rest of the time, sadly. But the powder the powder tastes good though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm all for like one pan cooking that kind of thing. So like this is a one pan dinner, and so then I was gonna show you guys. So then I'll do something like you can see the kids already got into these, but. I went and got strawberries for a Today? dollar oh my three hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> they have strawberries, two pounds for two dollars. And so I picked, I only got three. Normally this time of year, I would get like 15 or 20 and stock up and fill my freezer, but my freezer's full of meat. So this is another tip guys. Use your freezer for more expensive stuff instead of the cheaper stuff. So like I don't have bread in my freezer, I have meat in my freezer and that's what I'm stocking up on right now. So um, so we'll have for dinner green chili over rice or over tortillas and then I'll just cut up some strawberries and we'll have that. It's really good. Boneless skinless chicken breast today. They didn't have many left but it was still $1.99 a pound so I got one more to put in my freezer because I want to keep my freezer as, as stocked as possible with meat while it's still inexpensive because probably in the next month or two, it's going to start going up. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, okay. Next question. Oh, Paula says good morning from Australia. Good morning, Ooh, Paula. Ooh, Australia. Uh, okay. So let's see. Uh, Carla earlier asked what is with the net and the soap? Were you talking about soap nets? Oh, the soap nets. So you put your soap or your soap pieces in the soap net and it lathers and helps exfoliate and helps you um, not waste those little bits of soap. It's the best thing ever. I love my soap net. My daughter sells them at goatmilkgifts.com. But you just put your leftover pieces or your bar of soap in there and it helps um, exfoliate and bubble. It's just great. Beach Life says, I bake food for my family in the oven or on my fireplace. Mm. Tar would love to be cooking on the fireplace. I would love to. I want, I found a house the other day with an old cook stove that looked like an old-fashioned wood cook stove. And then I found a house that actually had an old-fashioned wood cook stove. The first one was an electric one, but the second one was actually a wood stove. I was like, oh, they'd have to leave the stove. I would only buy the house if they left the stove. <laughs> uh, sorry, where was I? Uh, so November Snow Tarot asked, 
Hello, what do you eat when you travel out of a suitcase? Didn't we do a video about that when we were at Mayo yeah. a couple years ago? When we went to the Mayo Clinic, we did a video, how, what to eat in a hotel. I mean, simple stuff, like we'll get strawberries, baby carrots, and then we'll just do easy things, like that's something where I would take the crock pot if it's in the car, or take the, take the little burner with a pan. If it's the whole family, if it's just me, I'll just do something like easy, like beef jerky you know, something like that. So Kathy says, oh, the roast beef in the oven is the best from dining on a dime. Oh, that's yeah. really good. She wrote me the best email today. Aw, how Thank awesome. you, Kathy. I got it. <laughs> um, oops, where were we? Uh, let's see, we already talked about that one. Paul says, we love your attitude in our house, Tara. Before finding you with my wife's health issues, she really struggled cooking. Since finding you guys, she's got her confidence back and I'm being uh! well fed. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Um, Jack, can you bring in my computer over there, please? Go ahead. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, Mary was talking about cooking the toughest cut of meat on slow and low in the oven. Always produces the most tender melt in your mouth meat. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use a knife at all. And that's the way, that's why Tara really promotes the slow cooked roast mm -hmm. and the slow cooked turkey. Because yep. both of those are just falling off the bone. Yeah, Mrs. Good. T says she loves wassail in the crock pot. That is one thing at Christmas time we'll put we'll put in the crock pot um, is the wassail, but. Uh, Mary Beth wants to know if you can freeze pie crust. Yes, and I do. Our recipe in dining is kind of funny. It makes three pie crusts. So why it makes three pie crusts is so that you can make something like a pumpkin pie that uses one pie crust and then an apple pie that uses two for Thanksgiving is why it's that way. But if I'm making something like a pumpkin pie, I will uh freeze the other two so yeah Ooh, cindy made the granola mix but use it as her breakfast cereal she says delicious oh yeah the granola is really good okay it... so cindy is a huge fan oh yay she has been feeling very blue lately I'm and her sorry. husband said could we give her a shout out from him saying that she has done a great job and that they love her dearly. Yes, thank you, Cindy. We do love you Good dearly. Good job, Cindy, keep going. You <laughs> can do it. You know, sometimes when you're a stay-at-home mom, you're kind of like, what is the point? Let me tell you, stay-at-home moms, you guys work your buns off. I'm not saying working moms don't, but stay-at-home moms work just as hard, if not harder, and I know it can get frustrating, so you go girl all right next okay i have to look a house came up as we're as i was doing this so <laughs> let's what that can't possibly be right huh i don't know i have to check it out what <laughs> she's saying it can't possibly be right because the price that's on it is a lot lower than we would expect oh. Complete renovation needed from top to bottom. Whole, home sold strictly as <clears throat> is. Okay, let's see how bad it is. So last year we oh, saw one. It's bad enough they won't even put pictures inside. Wow. <laughs> Maybe we should go look at it. Last year we saw one uh, down by Tara's grandma, and uh, it was this big, fancy-looking house, and then inside everything was just completely gutted. <laughs> There were wires hanging out of everywhere, and there was yeah. All the kitchen was gone. <laughs> we're thinking, wow, this is a big project for someone. <laughs> well, it's right next door to the infectious disease specialist, honey. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Mary Beth says your homemade chocolate pudding is the best too. I make it often for my husband who loves it. He likes the cooked kind, and the recipe is awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Yay. Okay, so I have to read this card that I got, and I think it's hilarious. And why I think it's hilarious is because it's from Rebecca. Now, what you guys don't know that we know is that Rebecca has been a viewer for a really long time with us. Like a really long time. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to read. <laughs> I have to read this just because I think it's funny. Thank you so much for all you do. I have been watching YouTube videos for years. A few months ago, you talked about people say how they want to get out of debt, but are not actually willing to do what it takes. I took that to heart because I was guilty of just that thing. 
I started putting every dime on my credit card debt. I'm happy to say I've paid off three credit cards oh, before yes. this whole crazy stuff hit. Um, with everything going on, I was laid off from three jobs in one day, making only a third of my income, but I am financially okay. I can't express how grateful I am for you because you called me out. I am not worried about how I will get through this. You inspired me to create a savings, stock my freezer when prices are good, and pay off debt. The combination of these three things have changed my life. Thank you. Look, a great big thank you even. Thank you. That's, that's like a mega thank you. You are making a difference in my life and the lives of others around the world. I feel truly blessed that God has shared your channel with us and your amazing cookbook so that we can have a better life. Sending you my love, Rebecca. Aww, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. <laughs> that was so nice. And we kind of needed it right now, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> okay, so I was yapping and I forgot to finish my green chili. So I have some cornstarch in here and I'm making a little paste with water. And I'm just gonna stick it in my soup here. Well, not really soup, my green chili here. And I'm gonna let it get thicken, and then we are ready to go. Ooh, that looks delicious. Oh man. It smells even deliciouser. Deliciouser, is that a, is that a word? I just made it one. <laughs> oh, oh, that is good. Oh, I love green chili. It looks oh my goodness. Different than usual. What did you well, put in I added different? peppers this time. I usually don't put in peppers. It doesn't usually have any red. Oh, in it. I forgot the jalapenos. Hold on. Ooh, hot. Sorry. Wow, that's delish. Mm. Yum. Except I forgot the jalapenos. You know what's funny is I'm not very much into kind of saucy, soupy things, but I really love this. So I just use dehydrated jalapenos because we don't use them that often and then I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that boil and get thick and then we can show you. Okay, next comment or question. Uh, By the way, if you guys just joined us, Dining on a Dime Cookbook, we are selling fairly vigorously right now. And I think I have um, less than 50 days worth. So if you're wanting this edition with the pictures of the family in here, and how we wrote it in the recipe cards. Um, let's see, where's a picture of the family? Um, well, where'd they go? We lost the family. Um, okay, yeah. So like the pictures of how we wrote the book, the story of how we wrote the book. This is the last edition that will be in the next edition it is being taken out of. Also, because of printing issues, the price is going up. So this will be the cheapest you will be able to get it unless we find a house tomorrow and have to move in three weeks like Big Family Homestead did, those crazy people. <laughs> um, that This is going to be the cheapest price. So the price is going up. I'm really sorry. Just the way it's got to be, unfortunately. Because the cost is going up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Rita wants to know if you ever do a variety pack of the soaps. Used to. We used to, but Ellie is selling out right now. I could ask her if she can put a variety pack on there. I don't know if she wants to or not. Um, but that's a good idea, actually. I should tell that to her. Ellie has a narrower selection than what Tara used to have because Tara made all different kinds yeah. of things. Um, but I found out even though I was making it all, people didn't necessarily want all those scents. So um, I just, when when I stopped, I told Ellie just to do like eight or ten cents and just leave it at that. Right now she is selling out of a lot of stuff because she's planning on moving in the next couple of weeks. So um, she doesn't want to have to move it. Um, Mindy wanted to know if you're stocking up uh, when during emergencies or whatever, do you worry about the price or do you just get what you need? Both. So the other day I had not been able to find yeast forever. And normally I just get the big bulk packets of yeast, but because I could not find yeast and I'm recipe testing for the new cookbooks, I really needed yeast. So I went ahead and just stocked up when I found it in the jars, which is more expensive. I just went ahead and stocked up on 
the jars. I did not buy them out for everybody who's going to yell at me. There's still the yeast left. Don't be hollering at me. But like today, even though my freezer's full of meat, since they had some, I picked this one up to put a little bit more in my freezer. The strawberries, normally I would have stocked up, but I've got meat, which is more expensive in my freezer right now. So, so Rachel says, I freeze sandwiches the same time for lunches in the morning. Grab one out of the freezer, throw it in lunchbox, and it's thawed by lunch. She said it only takes 10 minutes to make a whole loaf of sandwiches and freeze. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Arlene said, my daughter-in-law never learned to cook. She now loves cooking with a dining on dining cookbook. Yeah. She said she was so anti-cooking and makes me happy. She's enjoying trying to learn cooking. So scared of messing things up. I told her my flops have turned out to be the boys' favorites. Yeah. Actually, I think that's what people... That's what I did. I did. My mom tried to teach me, and I didn't want to cook. Well, yeah. We were surprised that people like about Tara that when... Well, most of you know, when she has a flop of some sort, she seems to be able to pivot and make it into something amazing. <laughs> And I think anyone can do that. You just It just depends on whether you look at it and say, this is a disaster, I'm going to throw it away, or how can I yeah. modify this to save it? Okay, so I left. I don't have kids to get it out, so I'm not going to. But here is the green chili. Can they see that? I hope without Dave the cameraman here. Dave uh, is... You probably okay. Go look. There is the green chili right there. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh, yes. Can you see that? Okay. So you then... You can see it with the peppers. Well, I normally don't put peppers in it, but I have extras and I'm want, or I have these dehydrated ones. Oh, it smells so good. So anyway, um, I'll serve it over rice or I'll serve it in tortillas with some sour cream and lettuce and olives on top, just however you want to do. For me, I personally like to eat it just as a soup. So I'll eat it as a soup by itself. Okay. Uh Let's see, I didn't have any other. Uh, Jody says Ellie only has a few cents. Does she only have a few? Yeah, I know she she's only, has a few she's only got a so. few cents left. She just listed a few more, but she is selling out. So if you guys want some, grab it. Looking to see if we have other questions. Or we can go back and look at. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody did ask. Or I think it was. Um, Denise asked about Buster earlier. Yes, Buster is doing pretty good. We got a ramp made for him. Now if we can just get him to stop jumping off the side of the ramp. <laughs> I guess that means he's not quite as decrepit as we thought. No, he is because he keeps getting stuck and then he falls and whacks his head on the cement. And I'm like, dude. But we're thinking, we were looking up last night, we think he's got dementia. And so I guess he's just not able to learn his lesson because of that. Well, we weren't so, sure because he paces around yeah. like a hundred times a day. Yeah, at night. It's it's worse in the <clears> evening. <throat> He'll just go around and around and around and around. And so, anyway. Rita's asking, are you going to do hardcover again on volume two? Yes. So, volume one is going to be a hardcover when we, this next printing. Volume two is going to be a hardcover for this next printing, and gluten-free, dairy-free is going to be a hardcover for that printing. Ooh, Kimberly says, too bad volume one and two can't be a set for Christmas. Need hardcover books. Well, if we can get them in, when we were supposed to get them in. What was the question? Sorry. Kimberly just said, too bad volume one and two can't be a set for Christmas. But It can. It will be. If we have volume yeah. one and two. Yeah. We better have it for Christmas. We better. Mainly our issue is we have I had, am going to sell them for Christmas that way, yeah. As, as most of you have heard, we've had trouble with the printing company since our... Since one, a year ago, February. There was one that was really dependable for us for 10 years, and then they sold to a larger company, and then all the people that we worked with ended up leaving, and then we discovered the reason why. It's because they... They changed the way they did everything, and our books were a disaster. So yep. ever since then, we've been trying to kind of get a situation that's better. And it hasn't been working. Um, so somebody asked if it's like a soup consistency, how do I serve it to our tortillas? I put the chicken and the, and the onions, and the, if I do peppers, in the center of the tortilla, fold the tortilla up, and put the juice over the top. And it's oh, so good. We don't even need tortillas right now. I went to the store and forgot tortillas. So we're just going to eat it over rice. But it's super good. And I just make it thicker. This is more soupy because that's the way I like it. 
but just add more cornstarch and water and you can have it thicker if you want to. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's look here to see what's going on here. All right, I haven't paid too much attention. Tonight I'm making oven fried chicken from Dining on a Dime using boneless skinless thighs and making one keto friendly with almond flour instead of baking mix. Ooh, Ooh, I never yeah. About doing that. yeah, that'd be really good. Thanks, Kendra. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys love it. Prayers for Buster, thank you. Uh, yeah. He, he's getting older and I don't think we have a whole lot longer left, but hmm. we'll see. Uh, uh, will our P.O. box still be the same if we move? No, I think mm. she means is it now. Oh, yes. Our P.O. box is the same now. It's P.O. box 193, Mead, Colorado, 80542. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Thanks for reminding me to keep and use baking grease for so many items in the kitchen. My husband loves the flavor in fried potatoes, fried oh. carrots, fried cabbage, and many other items. Speaking of which, that's what I did this time. Remember? I forgot I was doing a test and I forgot I was doing a test. I think I have dementia. No. I'm beginning to think. Okay, let's see. Yep. The bacon grease nailed it. Mmm. Yeah. Actually, the bacon grease worked really well on this. Mm -mm -mm. I usually put butter in there, but since I've been dairy free, I haven't. Hmm. Um. Uh, okay. Whew. Here we go. All right. Sorry. Uh. Yep. Okay. So I don't see any other questions. Oh, Tanya's review says I accidentally purchased expired flour. If um. Yeah. I mean, if it's like expired, like a little bit, I wouldn't worry about it. If it's like five years old. I well, maybe wouldn't. It would probably, flour has oils in it that go rancid, and so it might taste funny, but. So flour would, um, yeah, it would smell funny or taste funny, mm -hmm. or you'd yeah, see something it in it that smell. was not the right color. Yeah. Made stroganoff tonight with half hamburger, and my husband never noticed. There you go. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well. I think Jasmine says, Tara's like watching Julia Child. When something goes wrong, she just makes the best of it and keep going. Yes! <laughs> Actually, we watched the movie Julia and Julia a couple times. Related so well. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Yeah, it relates so well. Oh, you guys should have seen what the trash took today. Yes. Holy moly. I cleaned out the backyard and got rid of all my garden stuff that I didn't want anymore that was broken or whatever. And... The trash guy took it all. We had the regular big trash can completely stuffed and overflowing. We had another, I think it was what, 30 gallon trash can stuffed and full. We had a screen door in there. I had two huge tote things, not the small tote things, big tote things. I had like eight different pots of various sizes. One of them was like this big. We had um, a whole bunch of canned goods that are getting old for my emergency prep stuff and so i'm throwing all those away and they took it oh i need to give them some cookies next week or something they've been pretty amazing really <laughs> and no it's funny because at one point we were throwing away a lot of trash and then we haven't been for a long time but now that tara's been just she's been yeah super spring cleaning <laughs> And yeah, and yesterday I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to absolutely collapse. Actually, yesterday I thought, am I having a stroke or something? <laughs> I was like, I was so sick yesterday. I could hardly function. But I had to get plants planted because it was cool. <clears throat> so I was still getting stuff done and I got, what else did I do yesterday? I got the garage. Oh, we sold our car. Yeah, we had the, the one that I was day. trying to to see how long it would go. Well, we ended up getting, well, Tars, did you tell about the one from your grandma? Yeah, yeah. Well, we got a new car, 1000 bucks. So we had an extra car that we didn't need, and our $500 junker that we keep bragging about. We are like, now we have an extra car. And so we got to let it go. So, and I really, even though I, I, had, I hated to see it go, because I thought, I like this car, and it's it's probably got some more life in it, and I hate to just see it go to the... Yeah. Because I thought it might have to end up going to the great car 
Kevin and this guy. Yeah, we thought we were going to have to take to the junkyard, but here's the thing. We thought it was worth 500 I listed it for 750 and I got 650 out of it, and I think I priced it too low because I had like 10 people message me in like the first 10 minutes that I put it on. So I think I did it too low. Um, Christine, I made ham for dinner. Any ideas for leftovers? Oh, yeah. Go, take, go uh, type in living on a dime. Just type in ham. And we have an Easter article that came out like three weeks ago. It's called Easter Leftovers. I've got like 10 different things. Ham casserole, of course, ham and beans. Cut it up and dice it up and freeze it and then put a few in scrambled eggs or put a few in potato soup. Tons of recipes like that. So I think plan with Jen's question is very appropriate right now. Any advice on how to sell a car that just needs some work but not currently yep, running? Yep, that's what we just did. So the car was dead. It was completely dead. The lock was shorting the battery because the lock needed to be fixed. And it shorted the battery and it wasn't even running. So I put on there, lock needs to be fixed. It's shorting the battery. I don't know what's wrong with, I don't know how to fix it. My son is a mechanic, said it was a $20 fix. You can have it if you want. So what I do is I'm just honest. I list what's wrong. I have sold at least three or four completely dead cars. Completely dead. And people have come and gotten them. They've either come and gotten them for parts or they've come and gotten them because they were a mechanic and they wanted to fix it up and use it as a driver like this guy did. 650, this one is the cheapest I've ever sold. I've never sold one for less than 650. So, I mean, just list honestly, you'd be surprised. Plan with Jen wants to know where you list them. I do Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. And uh, who else was it? That Mary Beth said we're looking for another car for around fifteen hundred. What do you recommend? We well, don't have a specific kind of car. No. But what we'll tend to do is if we'll look at cars in and slightly above the price range that we have, and we'll go look at them and say, "Wow, this is really awful. This is really awful. This is really awful. Oh, this one is so much better than the other ones." Yeah. And if you look at um, 10 or so, usually you'll find one that's yeah. re in really great shape in there. Toyotas are pretty good. People run them a lot because they're really good, but you'll get a grandma car that, you know, is pretty good. Um, Hondas are good. We try to stick with Toyotas and Hondas mostly because they just really sh seem to work the best. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Hi, friends. I'm super late tonight. Glad you made it, Amanda. Hey, Amanda. I love fried spam. <laughs> oh, I should do a spam show someday. Any uh, ideas for a whole chicken? Um, just cook it. We have a roast chicken recipe in Dining on a Dime or go to livingonadime.com, type in roast chicken. I have the best roast chicken recipe in there. It's super delicious. And then just use the leftovers. You can use leftovers for chicken salad. You can use it for green chili. You can use it for chicken pot pie. You can use it for chicken and noodles, anything. Yep. Kathy, how many miles did we get on that car? 230,000. I think yeah. it would have probably gone to 300. Yeah, probably. And the, even though it wasn't running in that moment, I think I know what the problem was, and it would have cost us probably about 50 or $75 um, yeah. to fix it. So. But we just didn't need another car right now. We have enough. Paul that was the main says, thing. Oh, sorry. His wife says, Tara, you don't have dementia. You're like Elon Musk. Too many ideas in your brain. I know if I could just make the money that he does from them. But here's the thing. We already have two and number three new product almost ready to go. I'm just waiting for Mike to get Dining on a Dime 2 done. They're going to be in our, um, two of them are going to be in our dollar deals. We're going to have a dollar deal section on our website. And one of them is a menu um, plan. I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and do about 10 or 15 menu plans and see how they do. If they do well, then we'll keep going at it. If they don't, then we'll stop. But Estella wants to know what kind of plant is that in the background by the sink? Oh, it's my coleus. Is that, is it the same one? Yes. <laughs> so this one. That was such a hilarious it's, I story. don't know what it's called, but I call it a rainbow coleus. Isn't that gorgeous? It's getting ready to go outside actually tomorrow. Um, 
But the funny story about this was we were in court in 2014. Mike's parents were suing us. And yes, loving family. Um, <laughs> and, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Can't keep my mouth shut. Feeling a little... A little... <clears throat> Need to work on my anger management here. Um, <laughs> anyway, we were headed to court to the courthouse, and we were stopped at the stop sign, and I looked over. Oh, well, that's why that came up. And I was like, that is the most beautiful coleus I have ever seen. Well, it's Colorado State University is where they develop a lot of the horticulture stuff there. This was a development, I think, from there. I was like, oh, that's beautiful. Well, it was just in a big planter on the side of the road, and it was going to freeze that night. And I was like, I am getting a start of that. So he was sitting at the stop sign. I said, don't leave without me. At the light, yeah. He stayed at the stoplight. I said, don't leave without me. I jump out of the car and broke off like four or five starts that were about this big. The plant was like huge. And I got just like, I mean, it was huge. It was just monstrous. And I got up like four or five starts, and that is the same plant that I've been going since 2014. Yep. And what's funny is last year it just got totally beat up by hail, and it was one little stem again. Yep, yep. And it just keeps going, which is awesome. It just keeps going. Awesome. Mary Beth, my price book is wonderful, is ours wonder for me. I finally have it all filled out. Buy it, guys. Wonderful, too, for grocery shopping. <laughs> so she's talking about our price book here. So what I did was my assistant and I got the prices that we get for the best deal aw, thanks, on food. So we know when to stock up. So what I did was I made this price book for you. Now these are misprints, but well, they're part of the clearance all you thing, do, right yeah, these are part of the clearance. I, I approved a misprint and didn't mean to. It wasn't the printer's fault. But anyway, um, here's the food. And then you put in your price here for three different stores. Don't do more than three. Don't overwhelm yourself. And then this is my stock up price. So you can know. Now, with the exception of Timbuktu, Alaska, we have seen these prices all over the country. We have seen them in New York City. We have seen them in Honolulu, Hawaii. We have seen them in Los Angeles, California. We have seen them in Boston, Massachusetts. We have seen them in Houston, Texas. We have seen them in Wichita, Kansas. We have seen them in Denver, Colorado. We have seen them in Ireland and England. We have seen them all over. So these are reasonable prices that you can find all over the country. And back when they were doing this, People would write in and say, well, you, I can't get that price where I live. And then they would say where they live. And so then they would go look and they'd find it at the right store. There. Store ad was right there. The main thing is, if you have only one store you ever want to go to, then you may not find it. Yes. That's the main. Kathy says, Tara, you have a green thumb. That is one thing I do have is a green thumb. I should have done a gardening channel instead of a cooking channel. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bandana Grandma is asking... Do, are you cutting Jack's hair? If so, great job. I did, yes. That was pretty sharp. And I cut Mike's. Thank you, Jessica. They are press on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway. Uh, wow. White Picket Fence ordered food yesterday at my regular store. Hamburger was 80%. Uh, it was over $8 a pound. Woo! Good thing I have 25 pounds in my freezer. Yeah. That I only paid $1.99 yeah. for. And that's the reason why. That's why we do it. It's good to yeah. buy when the price is low. Uh, uh -huh. So, anyway. Cool. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Michelle's boss's car has 80,000, no, 800,000 miles on it. Okay. That, I've never heard of that before. That is pretty cool. I think a lot of people are talking about cars of three and 400,000. And I think one of the reasons wow. I wanted to keep driving that one is because I, I thought it could go to at least 300. I bet it, you would get it to four probably, but. Yeah. And. And the thing is, it wasn't a it wasn't a super pretty car. It was just a basic plain old gray. It was a five hundred dollar beater car. It was a plain old gray car, and it had a crack in the fender, um, but it drove really yeah. nice, except when it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it had a little short in the in the lock mechanism on the driver's side, and that caused the battery to die. Yeah. But, but other than that, it was it, a couple of times it broke down. Um, and then we had to spend like $50 to fix it. And I thought, this is way cheaper than 
Getting another car Aww, right now. Aw, Kathy says, I think your cookbook and cooking channel is a success. Just look at everyone I've inspired. Aw, oh, thank you, thanks. Kathy. Yes, I was ready to quit yesterday. I was just, yesterday I was just like, okay, I can't do one more thing. I can't do one more thing. I was just like, I can't do it. And so I was sitting there. I was like, okay, I gotta go get the plants out because it's cool. So I got the plants out. And I was like, okay, oh, somebody's called on the car. So now I gotta deal with the car. Okay, did that. Then the fertilizer. I had to put fertilizer on the yard because the yard had to be wet to put it on there. Well, it was in Colorado. It's so dry. You can literally sprinkle your yard and in five minutes, it's evaporated. So it was overcast. And I was like, oh, I gotta put fertilizer on the yard now because it had weed killer and fertilizer in it. And so I kept going, but then yesterday afternoon, I sat and had a pot fire pit for four hours. Yes. And just sat outside and had a fire pit for four hours because I was so exhausted. <laughs> I, it's funny because I kept trying to get her to go to bed in the middle of the day, which she, she was resistant. Yes. Susan is asking, do your press-ons need glue? No. And Marlene said it's not too late to do the gardening show. <laughs> Well, the truth is, well, if we, we moved, don't have anybody to edit, so if we moved to a different house where gardening was better, well, lately though, Tara's been so on the big ideas. It's funny because for a while we really worked together to try to reduce the implementation of too many big ideas, but lately uh, Tara's found a few people who are uh, who we've got. Yeah. Helping move a lot of those. Dave is helping really and my sister in law is helping, so we've got those two working on it. Um, and it, we're creating a lot of the new things yeah. that we've been kind of having on the back burner for a lot of years. Yeah, so we're taking all of our current ebooks and we are redoing them. And can I show them? Should I show them? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay, we're close enough now that I can show you guys. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, Rebecca loves your big ideas. Rebecca, I don't know if you saw, but Tara read your letter earlier. Thank you so much. Okay, here we go. Just a second, let me find it. Um, let's see, just a second. Um, where'd it go? Okay, so I think we're close enough. Do I do the? Do I do a reveal now? I don't know if I should do a reveal now. <laughs> You said you weren't going to, but as no, usual, I find out on the show. No, this isn't some, this is the crock pot ebook. This is the crock pot ebook. Where'd it go? I don't oh, know. Oh, here, 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 here. Okay. Oops, wait a minute. Okay, are you guys ready? Oops, how do I, oh dear. Okay, here we go. You guys want to see what the new books are going to look like? The new ebooks? This is the ebooks. The new ebooks. Okay, are you ready? Is hey, everybody do ready? Do you want to close all the other stuff or no? I'm <laughs> working on okay. it. You don't close tabs. Okay, are you guys ready? Is everybody ready? You didn't do the Actually, drum roll. Actually, there's not that much on there. Okay, wait, you got to do the drum roll. Well, no, I meant go to, go to YouTube. And find a real drum roll. This is a real drum roll last moment. Last time I did that, it took a while. No, you can do this. Okay. Oops. Not a drum roll. Right there. There we go. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, here we go. You ready? <laughs> you, you cut it off! Ta-da! Okay. Can you guys see the new typeset ebooks? This is the new look that we're going for for our ebooks. What do you guys think? Ah! Isn't it cool? Okay, and then so hold you on. had to be paying attention in the overtime time. Of the show. So then here. Everybody's saying yes. Show us. Okay, so here is the new menu plans. Okay, hold on. Okay, so first of all, okay, so here's the cover of the first one. Okay, 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 hold on. And then here is the menu plan look. 
Very nice. Dying of anticipation, yes. Isn't that Love cool? Love it. Lovely and very professional. Gorgeous and cool. And let's see. Very nice. Nice. That's like going to be the meal look. plan look. What do you guys think? Ah! We've been working out for like two months, which is why I'm so exhausted. Dave came up with those designs. My sister-in-law is helping put them together because we have like literally a thousand recipes to go and reformat. And the hardest part is finding pictures, believe it or not, because we use stock photos because I am not a food stylist. You can just yell at me whatever you want, but I am not a food stylist, so we use stock photos. So trying to find stock photos is hard, but we really make sure it's authentic, like the recipe looks. I can do it. I just don't like doing it. Dave and is pretty awesome at it. Though. Dave, he has it. Uh, oh, Mary Beth says, move over, Food Network. Woo! <laughs> As a matter of fact, they look so nice. Um, well, never mind. I'm going to shut my mouth before I say too much. Okay. So. <laughs> I've never known you to do that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, that's uh, calling the <laughs> pot, the kettle calling the pot black. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway that's the new style that we're coming up with we've got menu plans we're coming out with we've got new Ooh. typeset ebooks we're retypesetting our ebooks you've got a great job oh thanks <laughs> um so um yeah so anyway it has been a huge production oh the misprint yeah somebody asked what's the misprint so this the ebook the book the cover's supposed to come all the way to the yeah, edge the booklet was not supposed to have this white around it and the instructions on how to use it are missing but you added that to the download right uh i don't know that you did i put it on the ebook download you didn't tell me it was on the ebook on the ebook download we can add it to the print we're book. supposed to add it to the print book uh, download okay Okay, so Mike's adding it to the print, but all it is, guys, the, it's just the instructions on how to use it was missing, but that's not a big deal. All you do is just fill in your price here, three different stores, so just do your three stores, so like Safeway, Albertsons, King Supers, then do it in pencil, and when it gets to be a lower price than your first price, than your first sale price, then you know that's a stock up price. And you keep going until you just get your rock bottom stock up price. So like for me, chicken thighs and drumsticks, when they're 39 cents a pound, I stock up as much as I can because I don't find it that often. And that's my really good stock up price. Okay. So I know when I find them for that price, I need to stock up. Okay. So that's how you use it. Well, you're just getting lots of loves and people sharing little fire emojis. And ah! Do they like it? Yep. Dave, everybody loves the new typeset ebooks that you've been working on. Yay! <laughs> They're impressed. Yeah, what did you make? You made it back. I made green chili. Very classy looking. All right, thank you, Mary Beth. Oh, you know, yay! Somewhere. Anyway, I don't see any All right, questions. guys, please. Lots of lovely Ooh. comments. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Amory, Anne, what do you think about you cooking in a microwave? We just use it to warm up stuff. I don't actually cook stuff in it usually. So. But for warming up stuff, we use it every day. All the time, yeah. Although for some things, I like the yeah the air fryer better because it makes it crispier. Yeah. Somebody said, why don't you just take pictures of the food when you cook it? Because we have to get out of the lights. I have to arrange it on the plate. We have to get Dave up on a stool to get it, take it. It's just a huge pain in the patootie. And I probably should hire someone to make the food and do the pictures, but that cost would just be prohibitive. So, anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh, my daily side says, tell Dave I said hi. Hey. <laughs> All right. All right. And Carly says we're adorable. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> All right, Dave. All right, guys, please like, subscribe, and share. We will be back on Monday. Go check out Dining on a Dime Cookbook. The kids packed up the last pallet today. Yep. I think we have about 40 to 50 days, less than 50 days, I think now, worth of books. If we keep selling at the current rate, 
it is summer so it could stretch out summer is our slow season so it could go slower but with everyone panicking with layoffs and grocery prices and stuff we're selling like hotcakes and they will not be back in until hopefully september so if you need one grab it now we will see you guys livingonadime.com bye we're going to eat yes this awesome stuff